I'm making progress on my 1776 Volkswagen engine. I've got the rotating assembly put together. Um, the pistons are on here temporarily. I just had just checked the deck height with the new uh, barrels, the new cylinders. Um, and uh, next I'll be working on the heads. I have to bore out the heads to accept the larger diameter cylinders. And then I'm going to do a three angle valve job. I've got uh, a new tool that I bought um, to do that myself. Um, let me show you what I'm doing. Okay, I've got my porting done, uh, all that I'm going to do, which is mostly uh, just underneath the valve pocket, um, you're cleaning up that, that mess, and also um, port matching you know, for the gaskets, uh, for the intake and exhaust, and cleaning that up a little bit. Next, I'm going to do a three-angle valve job uh, on the valve seats. This little bit of equipment here is all you need to do your own three-angle valve job at home. Uh, no machinery needed. Uh, we've got uh, some different cutters here. This um, is a dual cutter here. This one cuts, uh, this is a 45 degree, and they're carbide inserts, and they're repla those inserts are replaceable if they ever get dull or chipped. Uh, being carbide, they'll last a long time. If you're careful with them, they, they will chip though. Um, and uh, the other side is a 30 degree for the top cut of a three angle valve job. And then this one is a 60 degree to go down into the throat of a um, valve seat and give you that three angle cut. This is the uh, a pilot that goes into your existing valve guide. Now it is important if you're gonna do this that the valve guides are in good condition. I mean, if you've got a, old heads that uh, the guides are worn out, you should replace the guides first. And, uh, you know, you might want to take that to a machine shop to have that done, or some people do that themselves. But uh, that is important because everything is going from the axis of the valve guide. And this is a tapered uh, pin. It, you jam it in there, give it a twist, and it locks in very rigid. And then it uses this upper shaft to guide the cutter concentrically around the, the pilot. And you just use this T-handle uh, to twist it. It's very, very simple. But this whole setup was less than $250. And you could, order, you know, you could call, uh, here's their information, give them a call and tell them what you've got. Uh, if you know the valve diameters um, and uh, angles, that would be um, best and they'll tell you exactly what you need. Now they sell kits already made that, you know, have a big assortment that will cover a wide variety that, uh, you know, I saw that at first and that kind of scared me. It was five or 600 bucks for that. But when I told them what I was doing and, and the size valves, they said, well, all you need is this cutter and this cutter and this pilot. And they set me up for, like I said, two, around 250, uh, including shipping. So uh, give them a call if you want to do this. We have a solid uh, tapered pilot that will go in the guide, and that picks up the center line. We'll give the pilot a, a twist. Like I said, it's a tapered pilot that goes into the guide. Give it a twist to make sure it's good and snug. Um, that's a good rigid setup. We're going to cut the 45 degree first just to clean it up all the way around the diameter, set that down on there, and this wrench goes on, and then simply light pressure and turn it, 
turn it by hand. Take a look and see. Okay, as you can see, that cleaned up. Um, not quite. There's an area on this side that's not cleaned up yet. Uh, these um, valve seats, these, these, are, these heads have never been run, so this is how they came from the factory. So, you know, even a new set of heads could use a valve job. Still not quite cleaned up over here. Still not cleaned up. Let's uh, give it a little bit. Still not cleaned up. We'll give it a little bit more. Okay, that finally cleaned up on the 45 degree cut. We'll put a, uh, I'm gonna use the Sharpie to mark the surface that I just uh, machined. That way when I use the 60 degree and the 30 degree, I can see where, where I am. Okay, I'm gonna use uh, some inside calipers to uh, gauge where the valve will come because uh, we're going to do the top cut next um, so it's going to clean that up. We're going to use the 30 degree which is the same cutter just flipped over and this doesn't take much. Take a little bit more. Okay, that got, um, okay, that 30 degree cutter got this top section here. You can see the little black Sharpie line. I had it going all the way across. And there's a little margin on top here that's the 30 degree rollover and uh, now we're going to do the 60 degree at the bottom and uh, that'll cut the throat and you could actually feel the difference one that's just a straight single cut 45 degree versus one that has a three angle it feels much rounder and lets the air get around uh, the seat uh, easier and more effectively and it really does increase the flow quite a bit. We'll do the 60 degree next. Okay, now you can see I think you can see now the uh, cut here. See the little black line? That's uh, where the valve will seat on that area. And then it's got a 60 degree cut down there. And it's uh, actually, the transition is much smoother that way. So we will uh, take this out and lap the valve in and see where it is on the valve face. If it's in the right place, we may have to adjust the uh, top cut and the bottom cut to move that seating area up or down in the seat. All right, we'll take out our pilot. And we'll use a little bit of valve lapping compound, grinding compound. This, this is water soluble. And just put a couple of of little dabs on the on the face there. 
and drop it in. We'll use our valve lapping tool, just a suction cup on a stick. And we go back and forth. You could hear the, the pitch change on the, uh, when you're lapping it. And here's the area that is hitting. You can see where the compound is, the grayish area. Uh, ideally, you'd want that up a little bit closer to the edge. And we could adjust that by uh, cutting that, recutting that 45, and it'll push it out. And we'll have to cut the 60 degree a little deeper to move it up. Taking the 60 degree cutter out, you can see in here. Um, it cut nice. You can see the uh, little black witness marks I left on there that I went across the face. So the bottom cut with the 60 degree and the top cut with 30 degrees uh, cleaned off the ends of that black mark. And uh, that, where that black mark is, that represents where the uh, sealing surface for the valve is. That's about the right location. So I'll go through and do that on all of them. And uh, I'm going to lap this in. I'll lap the other one in. Uh, and then I will check the uh, head volume, the uh, chamber volumes, how many cc's. Um, I'm looking to end up with between uh, seven and a half and eight to one compression, uh, hopefully on the eight to one side. We'll see what I end up with. Okay, I just finished lapping that intake valve in. You can see where the uh, witness mark is from the lapping compound. That's about right where you want it. Um, on the, you know, the outer half of the, um, of the face. And uh, not too close to the margin, but uh, fairly close. And you can see the seat. These used heads were off of a donor motor that was uh, exposed to water. But uh, they had never been run, so they were basically brand new heads. They started out uh, for stock 1600, and uh, I'm going to a 1776, which has a larger borer. So I did machine the uh, pocket for the, for the cylinder. And um, these stock valves have a little ridge on the back side, the intake and the exhaust. Uh, the idea, I think it was for emissions, it stops reversion of flow um, when it, when, uh, the air hits the, uh, back of the valve, it kind of, uh, hampers the flow, uh, on the exhaust, it's kind of important. We don't want reversion or, or too much reversion into the chamber. Um, so we're going to leave that little, I don't know if you can see, if you could, you could put a straight edge on it. You can see there's like hangs a little lip. So uh, on the, on the uh, intake valves, I'm going to cut like a 30 degree chamfer just to break that edge. It'll make uh, the air is going to be flowing out of the, this valve, so it'll uh, help help the uh, flow going in that direction. On the exhaust, it's coming the other way, so this lip really has no adverse effect on the exhaust flow going out, but we want to keep that little, that little lip so it doesn't, uh, there's no reversion back into the combustion chamber. So we're gonna do that on the lathe.
Okay, that was, that's just a back cut for that angle, but we could do the same thing if we needed to face these valves at a 45 degree angle. We could set the compound uh, on the lathe at 45 degrees. This uh, collet chuck uh, runs out less than one tenth of a thousandth uh, full indicator reading, so it's very concentric to the to the stem of the valve, and uh, because uh, this roughness you see from the from the carbide cutter, um, they go uh, concentric to the to the valve, and um, once you lap it in, even if it was on the face, it would uh, it would work out just fine without the use of a tool post grinder. Well, I've got all the valves lapped in, and I wanted to double check on the combustion chamber volume. Um, I, I checked all the chambers; they're all at 57 cc's. Uh, which is uh, good. That puts me with my uh, 45 thousandths deck height, that puts me at a 7.9 to 1 compression ratio. I'm running a SCAT C25 cam, and the manufacturer recommends between 7.5 and, and 8 to 1 compression, so that'll be on the high side. That's good. Um, I'll show you what I'm going to do to clean up these chambers. You know, I had them roughed in to do the, uh, before I checked the CCs, I didn't want to finish uh, polishing them and stuff and, until I knew um, that I was going to end up with the right CCs. Depending on how deeply you set the valve seats um, is going to also affect your combustor ch combustion chamber volume. Uh, but uh, because these seats have already been uh, cut and uh, lapped in so that I don't damage them when I polish, I've got some uh, old Old a couple of old valves that I cut down the head to make like you can see a razor edge on the on the uh, angle, and uh, what that does, you drop them in, and they set they set flush with the seat, and now I could go in there, um, you know, with uh, anything and 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 polish and not worry about messing up the seat. These are the cylinder heads that I harvested off of my cheap Craigslist Volkswagen engine. Um, even though they look, you know, a little uh, dirty and corroded, uh, that's because some, somebody had rebuilt uh, this motor. Uh, it was a 1600 and left it out in the rain and filled up one of the cylinders and, and uh, you know, made a mess of things. But uh, when I took everything apart, you know, there was still assembly lube on everything. The motor had never been run, and these were brand new uh, heads. So the valves uh, were already uh, in good condition. You know, they were new, they had never run. Um, so I really didn't have to worry about cutting the face on there. Now you can uh, face them on a lathe uh, with a single point carbide, carbide tip uh, cutter. Uh, or if you have a tool post grinder, you can grind them. Or if you, uh, if you don't want to do either of those and you have old valves, you could either um, take them, the valves to a machine shop, have them resurfaced. Or on, in some cases, if you just need one or two, uh, like on this, for this motor, for these heads, uh, the valves brand new are less than 10 bucks a piece. So, um, you know, it's cost effective uh, still to buy new valves and do your own valve seats and you've got a, a nice uh, three angle valve job. Well, one thing to remember, um, you know, after you do these heads and you lap in the valves, you know, the valves are gonna be married to a particular seat. So keep track of them. Like I have uh, on these heads, I put, on these heads I put, you know, notches, this is similar to, similar one, so forth. And, um, and then make sure that the, the valve that you lapped to that seat goes back in the same seat. Okay, I've got that three angle valve job completed to my satisfaction. Everything seemed to come out well. Um, when I checked the um, combustion chamber volume, um, I was using water uh, to fill up the chambers. And when I had the valves in there with just uh, hardware store springs, light spring pressure. I didn't have any grease to seal up the valves or anything, and uh, it held water, did not leak anything out, so I, I assured I have a good seal there. 
Um, I ended up with 57 cc's, which gives me 7.9 to 1 compression with my 45 thousandths deck height, which I'm happy with. That's what I was shooting for. But uh, I think it came out well. Um, I did also um, lap in the barrel of the tops of the cylinders to the heads with valve grinding compound um, just to make sure I have a really good seal there. I did have to cut that surface with um, my fly cutter and uh, just to be sure that I had a good, a good seal. There's no gasket there, so you want to make sure that's right. Uh, anyhow, I'm happy with the results here, and um, thank you for following along. And uh, if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing, and um, I will see you in the next video. Thanks.